Hi, welcome to Behind the Badge. I'm Chief Allen Rod Bell, Scottsdale Police Department. With me is the community liaison, Chris Vassell. Hi, Chris. Hi, everybody. So it seems like it's been a month since we've seen everybody, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we're we're getting into the summer. Schools are out, closed, right? We always talk about this. Got to watch know, the kids. No, traffic is awesome. Yeah, I know. I it's got to like work. really yeah. nice to fly on the freeway without <laughs> any having a million people there. But yes, fly means doing the speed limit. By exactly. The way. Yeah, okay, okay. Yes. <laughs> Let's clarify, right? Flying <laughs> the freeway. You can fly at 60 miles an hour. <laughs> um, anyway, but yeah, just watch the kids again the most important thing kids around water yeah they're in the streets you know on their bikes you know chasing soccer balls and as well as the water so this is the time to be really vigilant with the, with the young folks takes a few minutes seconds actually I mean, yep. it's pretty quick so uh, we just graduated at Citizens Academy yes. uh, 50th it was the 50th, 50th session 50th class, which is 25 yeah. years of doing our, our police citizens academy yeah. which is pretty phenomenal yeah it's been a while yeah, yeah. and um next one starts in september september and okay. we're taking applications as we speak so just go to the website on my page um chris Vassal, uh which is the community relations page and you can get it or just give me a call and i'll get it to you okay. I think this is going to be a great program today because we're going to talk about some things that we're trying to do to, to create a change in the, in the community uh, of a positive nature that a lot of people may not know about. Mm -hmm. and, and certainly if you don't have school-aged children, you may not even be really aware of, of, uh, of some of the th great things that are happening in our school system with trying to make sure we keep our young folks safe and our community safe. And so this is going to be, a, I think, a, an awesome program. And every, that, and every city has challenges with this issue. Yes. So yes. it's not like we don't have challenges, but we seem to be very proactive like we are with every other aspect within policing and community relations um, and hopefully making a difference. And, and so, you know, I sort of frame it this way because, you know, in police work, there's lots of things we try to deal with in terms of not just law enforcement, but preventing uh, crimes. Proactive. And being proactive. And so one of the things that for so many years we've been working on um, that we really didn't seem to make, a, make any uh, impact on was, was, you know, DUI, driving while mm -hmm. intoxicated or on the influence uh, of drugs and alcohol. And, and for many years yeah. we'd be doing prevention and just we'd be doing no. training Remember, and we'd be doing all that no. stuff. And, you know, all the things we would do either in, in, in prevention or education and in enforcement, and the numbers were still going up year after right. year in DUI arrests. Right. And we say to ourselves, how can we impact that? Because really the ultimate goal was have less drunk drivers on the road, not just to arrest them, but <laughs> Absolutely. have less of them. Absolutely, yes. And so as, as, our, as our viewers know, a few, uh, a few uh, sessions ago, we talked about this program called uh, Drawing the Line. Or knowing your limits, knowing, knowing your limits. Your limits. Drawing right. lines is a different program, but knowing your limits is what we talked about, and that was where uh, our officers would go out in the evening and stop people who are leaving the bars to go right. home. Right, do the breathalyzer. And, and do the breathalyzer. Asking, would you mm -hmm. like to take a breath test? It's very, very informal. Uh, it wasn't enforcement. It was, it was very friendly and saying, do, do you know how much you've had to drink tonight? Do you think you can drive? And giving them some self information. Uh, so they voluntarily took the test, and a lot of them were shocked to find out that they had no business. Uh, behind the wheel of a car. Mm -hmm. And we could touch 2,000 people a night with that test. And right? think how many that prevents, right. how many and drunk our, driving. Right, and, our, and we can only arrest so many DUIs a night. But literally, as a result of those contacts, we've actually had fewer DUI arrests mm -hmm. in the city of Scottsdale. And for 14 months, just to show this works, for 14 months, we didn't have a single alcohol-related um, death uh, by traffic accident in the city of Scottsdale. That's awesome. And it's plus awesome. then other cities and agencies around the country actually began taking that that program and implementing it there because it's such a good success rate, which is what we did a couple months ago. Yes, and it wouldn't have been possible without the grant and funding from the uh, Governor's Office of Highway Safety. They've been wonderful with us as partners. My point is, is that we continually look for things that we can do to impact the things that have been difficult for us to impact. And that's just one example. Today we're going to talk about another example. Right. Today we're going to talk a little bit about gangs. Which is another problem that has been around for quite some time. That's right. And, and if it was just the city of Scottsdale, you know, it would be just our issue. But it's a valley-wide issue. Mm -hmm. And we are impacted in our city from other communities yeah. uh, that may have gang-related issues. And of course, we've recently had a shooting death of a police officer, which is clearly related uh, to gang issues. And so Very we sad. want as an organization to impact uh, gang membership. 
And so we've got a number of employees that have come together in partnership with a lot of different agencies we're going to hear about uh, to develop a program that does more education, more prevention, and also gives young people a way out if they're looking for a way out. And Which that's is, a great... That's, that's so important. Yes. Because some kids don't know where to go or who to turn to. Right. So, I mean, this is an excellent way for them to find some help and get the resources they need. Okay. So enough of me talking. Let's okay. introduce our guests. That sounds good. All right. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. How are we doing? Now, a couple of you have been here before. I know, I know uh, Sergeant Marmy, uh, who is our SRO, our school, uh, stu school resource officer, uh, uh, supervisor, is here for the first time. First time. Welcome. I seem like I'm nervous. Happy to be here. Yeah, okay. Good to have you here, Larry. Uh, and and uh, Dr. Melissa Sackos. And, Correct. And, and, and here's what I'm going to do wrong, right, because I don't know if it's associate superintendent or deputy superintendent of the Scottsdale Unified School District. What's the, what's the right title? The official title is Executive Director of Student Services. Wow, okay. But I appreciate yeah. that. I think you, the gave her, I think you just oh, gave yeah, her a raise. I gave you a promotion. <laughs> you gave her a raise. That's, that's no problem. Appreciate don't that. Don't spend it all in one place. <laughs> okay. I think you're getting it's promoted. It's going to be very, it'll be very limited time, <laughs> yeah. so enjoy it while you can. They show this program several times. If you can get Dr. Pearson to watch it, maybe it'll be great and Yeah, yeah. In we'll mind. go with Associate yeah. Superintendent. Yeah. We're so excited to have you. You've been a wonderful partner, and of course, we've been working together the whole 12 years I've been here, and you've been a great partner. It's great to have you here. Thank you. Welcome. And you've been here before, I know. I right? have. Yeah. And then Jim Hill, who is a detective in our, and he's assigned to get him, which is the state gang task force, but he's mm -hmm. actually a Scottsdale police officer assigned to that task force. And right. Jim, it's always a pleasure to have you here. Thank You're you. here quite a bit, I mean, a lot of the activities you do with the post organizations supporting our young folks. So right. it's always great to see you. Thank you. And we'll start off with you, Jim, if you don't mind talking a little bit about the things I've already mentioned, but talk a little bit about how we got to where we are today and what we're trying to achieve. Well, with the, the program we call it Scottsdale Gang Out, is we're looking for a way to get kids out of a gang. Too long when people would come to me and say, well, how do I get my son out of a gang? The only answer we had anywhere in the state was move. How, how do I get Johnny out of the gang? Well, move Johnny out of that area. And that's just not acceptable for a family or a, a viable way to get out of the gang. So we began talking, and one of your uh, directors ever since you had the gang unit in place is you wanted an intervention program, something that we could take out and say, we can help you get out of the gang if you want to get out of the gang. Well, this isn't something you can do just from an enforcement level. You have to include partners from all facets. And it's just a, a kind of a law enforcement take on. It takes a village. So we needed to reach out to people. We can't be experts in everything, so we needed to reach out to those experts. And that's why we got the school district on board with Dr. Sackos. Uh, we have our school resource officer unit. They're in the schools. They see the kids. They know what they're doing. Uh, and unfortunately, the no, new uh, National Gang Youth Survey for gangs shows the average age of recruitment now is down to 12. So we really have to be proactive in the schools. And by age 12, they could already have been uh, pushed or coming into a gang. And so we need to have these things in place very early for them to get them out. The sooner we can get them out, the better. But we uh, see them all through that. Uh, cycle where they're into the mem gang membership and it's just a, a circumstance sometimes where they're born, who their family is, but there comes a point where they went out and we need to be able to offer that. So we need, we work with, develop this program not only with, with the schools, we also work with uh, the uh, juvenile probation, uh, Scottsdale's uh, uh, Youth and Family Services, uh, POSA Outreach, uh, Boys and Girls Club, uh, community uh, activists. We brought everybody to the table to make sure all the stakeholders were involved and had a say in how this was going to work. So what we're looking for is you know, we get that person, that, that juvenile or that young adult who wants out of the gang, they have to take that first step. They have to come to us. And they can be referred to us by any of the stakeholders, by the churches, by the schools, by anybody. But we want it to be a voluntary thing. We don't want it to be, you're here, you have to do this. We want truly them to take that first step. We'll talk about how to take that first step or what the process is in just a second, but let's find out a little bit of what's happening in the school system already to support this program. Well, the Scottsdale Unified School District continues to be very uh, appreciative of our relationship with um, the police department and our school resource officers. Uh, focusing on prevention in our schools, we have our school resource officers that do awareness training for our staff um, and in some capacity um, our students. And so ensuring that our staff 
um, can uh, identify the signs of whether a, a student is engaging in that initial at-risk behavior or a sibling of the student is engaging in that at-risk behavior, we can again intervene very early to provide those, um, those correct support services. Um, on the other side of that, um, working with the um, uh, Gang Out uh, initiative, um, we can also provide support services for students who may opt for that help and come back and, tr and, and to help them successfully transition back into school. You know, um, Sergeant, as, as Detective kind of said, people start out at 12. And I think that any young parent listening to that would key in on that, that age. You've already mentioned that there's been training at the school level for, uh, for the, the teachers to recognize those, those sort of um, indicators. But I think it's really important, perhaps we talk a little bit before we talk about the Gang Out program, about what those indicators are for the parents that are listening. Uh, is, can you give us some idea about what kinds of things parents not necessarily jump to the conclusion but at least right. be alerted to? Right. I think it's, it's important for the parents to know um, who their kids are hanging around, who are their friends, um, what kind of activities are they uh, into after school, um, are they you know, maybe starting to see a decline in the kids' grades, you know, the, their, their child's not doing as well in school. Um, as they have. Maybe they're being a little bit more isolated from other members of their family, from their parents. Um, maybe the parents have started to see a shift in their behavior. You know, maybe they're more defiant. Um, and then some of the traditional um, uh, things when you think about gangs are colors of clothing. You know, are they all of a sudden, they only want to wear, you know, red shirts and bandanas to school every day and they don't want to, you know, no other colors will, will work but that. Those kind of things that just being in touch with your kids, knowing their routines, knowing who they hang around, um, all of those things. And it, any deviation of that because you, you're, you're really as a parent in tune with your kids and you know when something's wrong or something um, yeah, it may be a little bit off. And, and like you said, Chief, it's not a uh, telltale sign that they're going to think about joining a gang, but it's an indicator that something's wrong and maybe they need to probe a little bit and, and maybe get in touch with their friend's parents, maybe reach out to the schools and say, hey, you know, I've noticed that, you know, Johnny's grades are dropping. You know, what have you, are you guys seeing anything that, that may be uh, indicators? Information is power. And then, again, this just all ties into all the other programs that we try to focus in on behind the badge with internet safety mm -hmm. and just, you know, who these kids are hanging around with and what they're doing. It's just every single program really interfaces with each other yeah. for success. You know, we're, we're, we're fortunate, fortunate to have um, SROs in, in all of our high schools, in the middle schools, and they're very in touch with their particular school campus. And, and they know most of the kids, um, either from negative contacts or hopefully more positive contacts. And so they help, and, and you know, our officers are, are reaching out to members of the gang unit during the year and saying, hey, you know, I may be seeing a trend of this. What are you guys seeing on a statewide level? Right. And so we have, it, it, it's almost constant communication. Um, we do outreach training to the security guards um, in the school districts. So they're aware of trends and, and what to look for. So it's all those partners coming together to see um, what we can do to continually help. So let's talk about the Gang Out program. Uh, you guys have been working on this, I know, for some time now. And you've gotten to the point where you feel pretty comfortable with the process uh, of uh, what young people can expect. And, and by the way, I want to also mention, this isn't just for young people. You yeah. mentioned young adults, but I, I think that anybody who was interested, we'd be interested in assisting. So, so we don't want to just limit it to an age by any means, mm -hmm. is my understanding. Uh, perhaps the school system isn't necessarily a resource with adults, but clearly adults that may have children may also want out and it can be a resource to the family. So tell me a little bit about the process and how this works and if I were interested, where would I find the number or where would I find the, the requirements or what's expected of me if I was interested in, in uh, looking for some help? And how would I not be afraid that you weren't going to arrest me? It's a good question. Well, it is a good question and that's, we have the, the detectives in our gang, you know, we're going to be kind of the gatekeepers for the kids coming in because we want them there for the right reason. We're not going to help you get tattoos off just so you can become a better criminal and nobody can tell who you are. We want, when they come in the door, they need to tell us everything. And that's what we want to give, give them a clean slate, clear the deck, not have any surprises. If there are uh, still criminal justice issues, we can point them in the right direction to figure out how to get that taken care of. Uh, we don't want a, a surprise somewhere in the middle of the process that all of a sudden there were crimes being hidden from us. We're not asking them to, you know, they got to start uh, 
snitching on their friends, but they have to tell us about their involvement. So we need to know more about them so we know what resources they're going to need. It's just not, yeah, I was in this, I went out. So we want to get involved, make sure they're serious, make sure they're committed to this program. So it takes a lot of courage. It does. It's going to take a lot for them to, to come in. But sometimes, you know, you get a lot of these kids, they just, they want out. They're just afraid. They don't know how to do they it. They don't know exactly. how. They okay. don't know yeah. how. They're stuck. Okay, it's so, scary. So I get to the point I come in and we have this conversation. And I'm looking for some assistance and I want to have, I want to have the telltale markings taken care of and I want to deal with a better, I guess, a better group of friends and, and, yeah. and, and, and activities. I still live in my old neighborhood and I still live in the same family atmosphere. Um, you know, what, what, what's there to help me, support me get through this process? Well, one of the first things, we're all going to sit down as a group, look at it, those that are involved in the gang out and see, okay, what components does this person need? First, we need to assign a mentor. And the mentor program, you know, we're going to go through the Boys and Girls Club. We also have a lot of interested people. It doesn't necessarily need to be a police officer because there are going to be things that may be an issue with where the person who wants out really doesn't want to have that one-on-one -on -one with the police all the time and they don't want to be seen meeting with a police officer all the time just based on where they're going to be living. But then we can decide, okay, are there drug and alcohol issues? Are there education issues? Are you on probation? How do we get your probation officer involved? Uh, job issues, do you need job training? Is there a family component to this, a dysfunction that we need to get other issues and other uh, services from youth and family services involved to work with the family to come to grips with what's going on? Because sometimes we're reaching out to generational gangs where parents and uncles, aunts and uncles were also part of this. So it's a hard chain to break, but you want to be able to stack the deck in their favor. And then once they've shown positive uh, progress in their commitment to the program, then we'll work with our uh, nonprofit partner, usually Post Outreach, to help them subsidize them getting those gang tattoos removed. And we look at doing that as part of that. They need to earn that right. And having them, those tattoos removed or covered up is a huge deal in the gang world. Once you do that, that's, a full, that's acknowledging to everybody in your gang, I'm done because we run into a lot of people, oh, I'm out of the gang. They still have the tattoo, they're still visible to us and to investigate gangs, you're never out of the gang until if I can still see those tattoos. Interesting. And it's not, it can't be a cheap or painless process. No. Uh, uh, I would think that, that you want somebody that's definitely committed to, to getting to a different lifestyle. Right. And, and while you're doing that, there's, there's coordination going on. I guess the mentor does the coordination between all the different agencies involved. And so the school system, uh, what would be your role in supporting that, that, that effort? Well, once it's established that the um, student is in this program, then the school would assign a case manager for the student, uh, be it the social worker, a counselor, um, to ensure that we're able to provide those services to the student. So it may mean that that's academic um, uh, intervention or remediation of some sort, whether it's tutoring um, or you know uh, different courses, um, and then also make sure that um, they can be become involved involved in the school because you mentioned that a student if they're going to go to school and then come back into the same environment how difficult that can be to not re-engage mm -hmm. with that at-risk behavior so the idea is student engagement um, at our schools you know whether it's through athletics extracurricular programming after school clubs um, to make sure that again they're now surrounding themselves with uh, students with like interests that are very positive in nature so they have something an alternative a positive alternative versus going home to the same environment and engaging in those same um, activities and, and Sarge, I would suspect that, you know, uh, again, this is risky. Uh, it takes a lot of courage yeah. and a lot of commitment. And I suspect even at school, there, there will be that awkwardness, yeah. uh, making a change of who are you? Um, you know, now, now you're the, you were this yesterday, now you're going to try to be this. I suspect yeah. that it's really important the SROs be alerted and aware so they can continue to support and provide a very safe uh, environment at school for the That's these young exactly folks. right, Chief. And, you know, to the extent that the, um, that the kid, once that contact with the SRO, um, maybe it's not so overt, maybe it's over a, um, a lunch period the kid will come and, and he'll reach out to the SRO and, and, and come to the office where it's not out in public so he, uh, you know, the kid doesn't have to go back to class and now his uh, friends that are still in that gang or still, you know, engaging in that behavior um, are now questioning him and, and, and challenging him on, on what he's doing. So, you know, maybe a little bit more quiet behind the scenes 
and the SRO, you know, provides that support, the constant support, and, and, and letting them know that you know, this this is the right thing, and and let them see a little bit bigger picture that you know five or ten years down the road, you're going to be really glad that you went through this hard time of getting out, and this is why you know you, you have all these opportunities now. They just have to learn to build trust, and. Um you know, it, like I said, it takes courage, but if you have that courage, um, y you have to be confident that that person is going to be there for you and, yeah. and watch your back. Yeah. And I guess that's the motto of police anyways. We always watch each other's back. Mm -hmm. That's the whole purpose of it. So you would become part of the family then and just I, to make yeah. sure that we're there for you. I can tell you that several times during every school year, um, whether it's gang related or family issues or whatever it is, that. Um, Students are reaching out to the SROs um, numerous times a year and wanting advice. They're wanting guidance. They're wanting mentorship from you know maybe they're not getting it at home. Maybe they're you know the, it's a broken family or, or whatever it is, and they're reaching out. And the SRO provides that um, that almost a father or mother figure to them. And um, and it's really um, it's, it's it's very rewarding for the SROs because um, it's not about to enforcement in the schools and, and they're building the trust and they they have a great relationship with the kids. So, you know, we have um, probably parents and even grandparents uh, of school-age children watching this program that might say, you know, this sounds great. My kid may not be willing to walk in, but I'm willing to walk them in. Mm -hmm. And so uh, are we open to having parents reaching out to us for help and assistance, even bringing somebody in that might be a little bit resistant uh, to give them that support as a, as a parent uh, to get them into the system? Or are we gonna require the young person to come forward on their own, uh, fully committed to, to the process? How flexible are we to have to be available to the parents of young folks? Well, I think we're gonna be very flexible. I mean, there are gonna be the, the parents and grandparents are gonna bring you know, young Johnny in. Okay, I think he's in a gang, he's got issues. But what I want to do is sit down with, with the child or the, you know, the young adult by themselves and talk to them. Okay. What I found out dealing with a lot, a lot of these guys is they really do want out. It's just when they're in that group setting, they can't think like that during group think. But when you get them by themselves, they really are looking for that way out. And if you can get them to start talking about it and start trusting you, then you can work and get them on that side and get them on that path. There's got to be some kind of glimmer there. Uh, that the parents saw, or the grandparents saw, that even got them to that point. And, but you know what? Even if they call us, we'll go out to the house and talk, talk to the kid, if that's what it takes. You know, sometimes all it takes is that we're going to reach out, and we're going to try to get you to come over. I mean, we're not going to force you to do it, but we can give you the options to lay it out for you. Okay. And one of the things you talked about, people living in that same neighborhood, we are always going to provide them a direct contact to one of us in the gang unit. If they're ever feeling threatened or in any kind of danger, they can immediately call us and we'll get resources down. Good. And, and so if parents can't bring the kids along, grandparents can't give but they have concerns, uh, we'll put up the contact information and call and say, look, I've got concerns. Help me figure out a way to, to make this they, work. We're available to that. They, can, they can call me. They can call um, Jim. Um, call the main number for the police department and it'll probably be routed to me and we will... Um, whatever we can do to help and assist we, we do it um, several times every year and we will go to them and then um, at least start engaging them in conversation and, and whatever direction it goes in whether it's to gang out or you know maybe support with a you know a school issue then um, we're absolutely the point of contact so yeah. what we really want our audience to know um, both young adults and, and and parents and grandparents who may have concerns is there's help out here mm -hmm. All you have to do is just reach out. There's several ways to do it, um, and just know that you're not alone, and just to do something about it, because taking the first step is the hardest. Absolutely. So where are we advertising? How, I mean, other than this program, uh, what are we doing to let people know that this exists? Well, we'll be up on Facebook and Twitter and all the social media sites very soon. We're just formalizing that plan to, to get them out there. Uh, I know the, the school has plans. We've been at parent universities, talking to the parents, giving uh, gang awareness presentations. So we're trying to get the word out to every outlet we can. Okay. And, and Sounds great. Bob. I just, you know, I hate to bring this up, but with all the issues in the schools right now across the country of people, parents afraid to send kids to school now, which is just so sad. Um, again, just to assure the, our, our audience that there are resources here to help you. And if you at least reach out, we may be able to prevent some of these other things that, that occur because by keeping silent and not saying anything, you can't get help. 
And, and if, in fact, it's a little threatening to contact the police for this, the school system has always been readily available to Absolutely. offer those resources. Mm -hmm. So there, there's lots of resources. You are not by yourself, right. and you're not the only person experiencing this. Yes. Um, so we, I agree. funny, do something about it because you may be able to help it. If you see a friend, uh, if as you're a young adult watching this and your friend is having issues, tell somebody. Right. Absolutely. My advice to parents always is um, you c come across something and you're not sure whether or not you should call the police, you should call the police. If, 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 if you have the, you know, that voice in your head saying something's not right and you can't decide because you don't want to waste our time or you, or you think it's going to be silly, um, that's the time to call the police. We still fight the concept that you have to have permission to call 911. <laughs> and what if I call and it's not really an emergency and right. I'm in trouble? And we, right. we tell everybody that's what they're there for. We'll decide whether it's an emergency. Mm -hmm. We get there and there's nothing to it. We're happy we don't have to write a report. Right. <laughs> but we'd much rather get to the house that's being moved legitimately than the house that's being wiped out. Yeah. And we have to write that report of all the pieces of property that were inside that house and still look for the guy who took it. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. We, we want you to call. Uh, that's important to us. That's why we're such a great such a safe community as we have our citizens willing to be partners with us and keeping it safe so and you guys are great and i appreciate Thank you for it for being here and, today and you just i know you just represent a small group uh of the people that are involved in this process uh, my hat's off to all of you You've been working on this for a while to get to where you are at this point and um, i'm looking forward to hearing about our successes in this endeavor because this is huge this is an opportunity for people that feel painted into a corner to get out of that corner and get out of that corner safely it's a great and, program yeah. Yeah. So thank you all for thank what you, for having you guys us. have done. Thank you for having us. Real pleasure. And that concludes this month's uh, edition of Behind the Badge. Um, have a great, safe uh, summer, uh, and I guess we'll see you next month. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye now. Be safe.